wonderful world of Disney. And now, from the wonderful world of Disney, Snow Bear, part two. The story began when Paca, a young polar bear cub, became separated from her mother and immediately got into all kinds of serious trouble. <laughs> a sensitive Eskimo boy, Timko, was tending his father's trap line. Hoping to sell the cub to the trader who came to the village each year, Timco captured Paka. Through gentle care and regular feeding, Paka soon became a pet and a friend to Timco. The cub made a big hit with the village youngsters, especially Ugala, Timco's sweetheart. As the days passed, Paka grew in size and strength. Paka! Paka wa kwa wushik. Kwa. She learned to obey Timko's commands. Oh, yeah, not to do the wa kwa kwa. Hi. The boy and bear spent many happy hours together. Timko even found a way to put Paka's strength to a useful purpose. But then the trader arrived in the village, and Timko had to face up to parting with his friend. Maybe not this year. If maybe next year you have another one, I'll, I'll take him maybe. But that Nanok too. Ugala was pleased that the trader didn't want the cup. But Timko's father, Akatak, was worried. He was afraid that Paka would cause trouble, and he was right. Breaking into a community storeroom of precious food supplies, Paka ate her fill. The village council met to consider Paka's fate. For the safety of the villagers and to protect their food supplies, the big cub was condemned to death. In a desperate attempt to save her life, Timko took Paka out to the distant ice pack. Driving the cub away was the hardest thing the boy had ever done. And so the unhappy Timko and the bewildered Paka parted as the cruelest time of the year closed in on the polar ice pack. When winter comes to the Arctic, the sun disappears. Bitter, chilling winds take over the desolate tundra. The polar pack becomes a frozen nightmare of ice and snow. As a yearling polar bear on her own, Paka could only wander across the frozen wastes in search of food and shelter. She survived by instinct alone. In the village, the Eskimos spent the dark, cold days inside their secure sod houses. Winter was a busy time for Timko and his family. Akatak cleaned furs with cornmeal. Timko's mother fashioned mukluks. His sister made thread from caribou sinew. And Timko worked hard at improving his carving skills. Mm. 
Akotak believed his son would be a better carver if he learned about animals through hunting them. Tim Cole would then be able to visualize a polar bear's movements through the eyes of a seasoned hunter. Far from the village on the ice pack, Paka grew in size and strength as the weeks and months passed. At times, though, she was still a playful cub at heart. As Timco grew older, Akotak continued to school his son in the ways of the hunter. On this day, they were searching for seals, which both the Eskimo and the polar bear depend upon as their main source of food. Alone, Timco was still more interested in observing wildlife than killing it. He often thought of Paka and wondered if he'd recognize her should they meet again. What he did meet was a sealed pup breaking out of its nunajak, Eskimo for a seal's den. Once again, Timko's gentle nature had brought him failure as a hunter. <clears throat> With the maturing paka, seal hunting was a matter of survival. Soon after Timko turned 16, that he joined his father and Ramaluk on a walrus hunt. Ramaluk moved up to ready his harpoon in case they had to retrieve the walrus from the freezing water after the huge animal had been shot. Suddenly, a giant polar bear appeared. It was stalking Ramaluk. Could it be Paka? There was no time to find out. It was a big male, not Paka, they'd driven off. Ramaluk's injuries appeared to be serious. Timko blamed himself. His hesitation could have cost the life of an old family friend. Then and there, he made an important decision. Um. 
Tim Coe had decided to live far away from the village for a full year to survive on his own or perish. He had realized that his failure to develop the instincts of a hunter was endangering the lives of others. Ugala had good news. Her father's injuries were not serious. But Timko held firm to his decision. His mother reminded him he'd forgotten his carving tools. Timko vowed he'd not carve again until he had proved himself as a hunter. <laughs> Leaving his village wasn't easy for Timko, but he hoped that in doing so, he would find himself. Far from Timko's village, Paka had come of age. She was now a mature polar bear and instinctively knew that early spring was the mating season for her kind. She scented the presence of a suitor in the neighborhood and set about making herself presentable. The male in question didn't seem to be very interested. <laughs> Paka wasn't at all bashful. She playfully displayed her most feminine charms. Paka's indirect approach apparently was making little impression on the big male. So she tried a more direct one. later when Eskimo hunters from a distant village ventured out on the ice pack and into the territory of Paka and her mate. The male polar bear travels with the female for only a short time and then returns to his solitary life. For Paka and her mate, this brief interlude was to be rudely interrupted. escape beneath the ice. to head for a new and safer territory. Timco was also traveling into new territory. He had heard tales of an old cave far up the coast from the village. It had once been used as living quarters by hunters, but had been abandoned years ago. Many said it was now haunted by evil spirits. Needing shelter for the hard winter ahead, Timco decided to explore it. Evil spirits or not.
Tim Cole tried to forget the frightening legends about the cave. He didn't know this really was the den of a living evil spirit. A dangerous, vicious wolverine. possession of the cave, he had lost his most important weapon. Without the gun, his future looked grim. In the meantime, Parker's great stamina had taken her many miles from where she'd been hunted and into new territory. Timco moved his gear into the cave and prepared to live much as his ancestors had before him. He didn't have much confidence in his ability to use the spear he'd made, but he knew he had to master it in order to survive. first hunting trip with the primitive weapon, Tim Coe encountered some of the most unusual animals in the Arctic, muskox. When approached by an enemy, a muskox herd will instinctively bunch together in a circle, with the bulls facing outward toward the danger. This defensive formation had worked well for the muskox against wolves and other predators and even against Eskimos armed with simple weapons. But against modern firearms, the tight cluster of animals made it easy for man to slaughter them to the point of near extinction. The lead bull challenged the intruder. One of the animals would supply him with meat for weeks. Timco moved in for the kill. The boy seemed a lot more worried than the muskox. As Timco had feared, he had much to learn about hunting muskox or anything else without a rifle. It was playtime for Parker after her long journey. Like all polar bears, Parker
Parker had an excellent sense of smell, but rather poor eyesight. With the wind from behind her, she wasn't able to identify the furry creature on the shore ice. Suddenly, Paka sensed there was something familiar about her intended prey. A wild bear would have attacked at once. Paka. Timco was certain this was his old friend, but he didn't know just how tame she might be after living on her own in the wilds. He thought of a way to test her. Baka. He still had the Eskimo club he'd used as a fetching stick when Paka was a cub. Baka. <laughs> And so it was that Paka and Timco met again and cautiously renewed an old friendship. Timco was unsure about sharing his cave with a giant half wild polar bear. He ordered her to stay outside. to meet Paka out on the ice pack, but quite another thing to have her come into the close quarters of the cave. Eskimo side by side in an ancient Arctic cave. One of the most unusual partnerships ever formed in the frozen north. As the days passed, Timco and Paka returned to their old ways, sharing in all they did. 
to claim all food for her own. Yet, at his command, she'd share the catch. Even though it wasn't always an even split. having problems in using his primitive weapons, especially on elusive game like the Arctic Hare. However, he now had a hunting partner who seldom missed and always shared. It was on a trip along the coast that Timco found some driftwood and other objects washed ashore by the sea. He now faced the laborious task of carrying everything back to his cave. But wait, maybe Paka could remember something he'd taught her as a cub. Paka did remember. Timco worked with his new materials, he rewarded Paka with a well-deserved back rub, but she always enjoyed. Timco now realized just how important everything was that his father had wanted him to learn. Absorbed in his work, Timko had momentarily forgotten Paka. Her gentle reminder wasn't ignored. After a great deal of practice with his new weapon, Timko tried his luck at hunting ptarmigan. He was accompanied by a somewhat oversized bird dog. Paka flushed the flock. <laughs> Tim Cole, the hunter, and Paka, the retriever. A most effective team. It was several days later, and they'd gone on another beachcombing trip. Trader Jim Johnson. To Jim, it looked like a big polar bear was attacking Tim Cole and that he needed help in a hurry. Jim didn't see a rut in the beach. Mr. 
Yeah, I was uh, kind of afraid of that polar bear. I thought uh, he was going to get you. I had to land here in a hurry. That's Paka? Yeah. Well, it sure has grown a lot, I tell you that much. Yeah, it's in pretty bad shape. I don't know about it. Tim Cole and Jim were worried about the trader's plane. Yeah, I should look where I was going when I got this thing here. I'm gonna have to get it. Come on, let's try and get it out of here, okay? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Okay, heave. 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 Okay, wait. Wait a minute. If this wind changes and this ice comes in, I'm not gonna have an airplane left. It's a much thicker one. Jim figured Timco had to be joking. But he definitely wasn't. Jim wasn't ungrateful, but he kept a wary eye on Paka. The trader explained that Timko's parents had asked him to watch for their son during his travels. Can you now ride? Hi. Aha. Uh -huh. Wait till your folks see this. Kupaknik. The trader had brought some coffee, and the two visited over some cups of the hot brew. Aligashu puti. Ashimarama kotu kotu ngareto. Sumek, nice skins. You want to trade? Yeah, it's a nice Wolverine. What? Real nice fur. Bad. Having a healthy respect for polar bears, Jim wouldn't hand over the rifle until he was ready to leave. I guess it's okay to give you the gun now. Tupun. Aria. Okay. Ammunition, too. Aria. Oyana. Jim had a surprise for Timko his carving tools. Mother sent you. For these long, cold winter nights, maybe a little ivory carving, huh? Yeah. This weather's getting kind of bad. I'm going to have to go. See you. The trader had offered to take Timco back to the village, but the young hunter was still determined to stay on his own for a full year. It was a difficult decision for Timco to make.
Parker had been acting strangely since Jim's visit. She was often grouchy and always ravenously hungry. Timco found caribou tracks, he understood why Parker had gone off on her own. Something had frightened the caribou. Timco's shot had been right on the mark. Timco soon realized it had been Parker who'd startled the herd and that she was now claiming the kill, defying him for the first time. had changed, but why? Maybe her fear of guns had turned her against him. Perhaps he'd find out later, but for now, Tim Cole let her have her way. It was several days later. Paca had not returned. Paca! Tim Cole decided she'd gone out on the ice pack to spend the winter hunting seals. It would be a long, lonely winter. Parker had returned to the pack ice, where she could satisfy her demanding appetite. Tim Go didn't know the real reason behind the big female's increased need for food and why Parker had left him. She set about digging a den where she would spend most of the winter and where her cubs would be born. Yes, having made it in early spring, Paca was to become a mother. Soon, the dark days of winter descended upon the Arctic. Secure in his cave, Tim Coe was grateful that the trader had brought him his carving tools. He now felt he had the wilderness know-how that would make him a better carver. And Paca, of course, would be his first subject. Timco spent many hours on each carving as the winter weeks passed. Timco remembered other animals he'd hunted, seals and beluga whales. The Arctic hare, the owl, a fox, all took shape in the walrus tusk ivory. As he worked through the long winter, Tim Coe's thoughts were often with his family. Far away in the village, the walrus dance was being performed in the Kashim. mother and his father were thinking of him, too, and they missed their son, as did Ugala. 
Tim Coe had carved a village scene from his fond memories of home. And so the winter passed. And almost before he knew it, Tim Coe was on the hunt again in early spring. He continued to build up his stock of valuable furs, like the Arctic fox. There were times when he would conserve ammunition by using the primitive weapons he had made and mastered. By combining everything he had learned from his father, from Paca, and from experience, Tim Cole had become a skilled hunter. To retrieve game from freezing water, Tim Cole had made an Eskimo Nixik, a barbed float on a rawhide line. so well as a hunter, he was beginning to wonder how he would get all his furs and game back to the village. The days grew longer. The ice and snow slowly retreated. The tundra became alive with color. Tim Cole continued hunting, nearing the day he would head for home. And then he met an old friend. At least Tim Cole hoped it was an old friend. Baka. Baka. <laughs> Yes, it was Paca, all right. But she made it clear that he wasn't to come any closer. He knew now why Paca had left him and why their unusual friendship must now come to an end. With the responsibilities of motherhood, Paca would have to go her own way. Tim Coe was glad for her, yet sad to see her leave. Then he discovered there were other hunters on the tundra. They could bring sudden death to Paca and her cubs. Instead of trouble, a most pleasant surprise was in store for Tim Coe. Ugala had come with her father and Akatak to look for Tim Coe, since the trader had told them where he could be found. Tim Coe quickly learned that the men had gone inland to scout for game. So he knew that Paca and her cubs were safe for the moment. The two young people had much to talk about as they waited for their fathers. They were all soon enjoying a feast with Tim Coe as the host. The future looked bright for Ugala and for Tim Coe. Both of their fathers were impressed by the way the young hunter had met the challenge of being on his own. And so, in Tim Coe's cave, there was a happy reunion. But out on the tundra, trouble was brewing for Paca. As a mother, she would face many more challenges in the days to come. Not only must she protect her offspring against the attacks of man, but also against the dangers of her own world. Like this giant male whose intense jealousy of cubs turns him into a killer of his own kind.
so it was that Paca, the giant snow bear, became a true monarch of the Arctic.